Night shifters, ever witnessed a paranormal activity? If so, what was it? Not necessarily night shift, but I used to work in a bar that was next door to a funeral director's. Not only was it next door, it had actually previously been part of the funeral director's, and the welcome slab outside had the director's name and year carved in it, like Ferguson's 1891. In Scotland so we were only open until 1 a.m. at the latest. There were a few different events, nothing uber scary, but the whole vibe of the place when you were on your own was so unsettling. Nighttime routine would mean, one staff member would be downstairs counting tills, and the other would be in the venue cleaning everything. I remember one night, I was polishing the bar taps and I saw someone standing behind me in the reflection. I spun around so quickly to no one being there and messaged my coworker to come upstairs. She called out for me from the bottom of the stairs before she'd even got my message, and when we reunited, she said she'd heard me coming up and down the stairs multiple times. The weirdest part is, she was counting cash two levels down from me, and I hadn't been down one set of stairs at all, never mind, two. This place also had two sets of stairs that lead nowhere, and in our wine cellar, we had a massive old iron door that had a wheel to open it. I'm not sure what it was for, but the wine racks were over it anyway, preventing you from trying to open it. In the girls' toilets, there was a bit that looks like it'd be a window, but was boarded up and below street level. It was just a board over a sharp 13 feet drop in some weird underground alleyway thing. One night after locking up, we stayed behind for a couple drinks, and one of my coworkers was dared to jump down. She did, was fine and we were all laughing. She went so quiet all of a sudden and started freaking out, asking us to help get her out. When we did, she was just quiet and went home, and a few days later eventually, said she felt someone touching her arm. Not a gentle brush, but like someone had put their palm on her forearm and wrapped their hand round it. In college, I worked a night shift from 12 a.m. 8 a.m. In the middle of it, I would often take a break to run home and eat there. I lived on the top floor of an 11-story high-rise at that time. The building was built in the early 1920s and had a reputation of being haunted. When I had ghostly run-ins during my break, it was always the same. I would leave my apartment on the 11th floor and hit the lobby floor button. If an off-ride was going to happen, the elevator would stop at the 7th floor. When the doors opened on the 7th floor, no one would be there. Once the doors closed, instead of opening at the lobby, the elevator would drop down to the basement level which required key access. When the doors opened in the basement, the doors would open and reveal a long dark hallway with dim green lights at the other end of the hall. The energy would feel completely off, and I would clench my eyes shut until the doors closed and the elevator took me back up to the lobby. After looking into the history of the building, I found several accounts of hauntings. Apparently in the early history of the building, several people were found dead in the basement. I then thought that perhaps there actually was someone or something entering the elevator on floor 7. So, I used to live on site at an 18th century historic home and museum previously owned by a founding father. There were three or four of us that had houses on the property, and the rule was someone had to be there 24-7-365 to respond to any issues, securing the property at close, dealing with trespassers, fire burglar alarms, etc. I have many, many stories about the weird stuff that happened there, but this one is my favorite because it was witnessed by myself and two police officers, documented in a police report, and recorded in alarm logs. Got a call in the middle of the night from the alarm company. Someone had definitely broken into the historic house. They managed to get in without setting off an alarm, but had triggered four motion detectors in succession on the second floor. Given the situation, I had them dispatch the police and I met them outside. We didn't see an obvious point of entry, so two officers stayed outside in case the burglar tried to run, and I went in with two others. They started clearing rooms from the basement up while I checked the alarm system for any faults. I met back up with them on the first floor. They were both standing at the foot of the main staircase, flashlights pointing up to a chair, which was right on the edge of the top stair. Officer 1. Is that supposed to be there? Me? No, it should be in the first room on the left. Officer 1. The motion detectors. Were they the ones between that room and this chair? Me? Uh-huh. Officer 2. Man, I'm not going up there. None of our stuff works on ghosts. So the one officer cleared the second floor while I put the chair back, and the other officer stood at the foot of the stairs. After re-alarming the building, we all gathered at one of the patrol cars to write an incident report. We came up with something about a raccoon getting in through the attic. 
It didn't make any sense, but it was better than, I don't know, ghost moved a chair? The next day, I had to turn the incident report into the museum's director. He read it and was immediately like, oh yeah, that wasn't a raccoon. Was it really cold when you got to the top of the stairs? It was. I used to be a manager at a local movie theater, and we had some spookery afoot. The theater was relatively new, as was the road it was on, the area was developed in the late 90s, but, before the area was developed, it had been farmland. The street that the theater, as well as a bunch of shopping centers and a Walmart, was where an old farmhouse was, and sadly and very much like a horror movie, the farm had been home to a very brutal family murder, the father killed the whole family and then himself. So I started worked at the theater in 2007, and, immediately, new employees were told about the ghosts. I've worked in a bunch of places and most have some legend of a haunting, but every single employee affirmed that. A. The theater was haunted. B. There were multiple ghosts and C. They were so prevalent that you would get used to it very quickly. And they were not wrong. Theater 12 was the most haunted place in the theater. It was a benevolent haunting, it never seemed malicious, but it was certainly there. A girl died in there in the second year of the theater being open. She fell from the row of seats above the rampway into the theater and landed on her head. She was playful and once you accepted that there was a ghost, it didn't really bother you. She would knock armchairs down, ushers had to walk through and put them all up and open and close doors. The first time I really accepted she was there involved those darn armchairs. I had just gone and put them all up when one fell. I put it back up and the armchair next to it fell. And then the whole row fell. Scary, but once you figured it was a kid playing, it was somehow less scary. She'd also listen, if you told her you were scared, she would stop. The upstairs was haunted by a man. Nobody knew who that was, but everyone thought it was the dad that killed the family. All I know is that one was angry, the girl was playful and you never felt scared when her things were happening, she wasn't stuck in theater 12, but that was where she was most prevalent. The one upstairs slammed doors, held doors closed when you were trying to leave, and constantly turned lights on and off. The lights were the worst part, the upstairs booth was one long room with all of the projectors, and the lights were on each side of the room, so, when they went out, you had a 30-ish second walk to turn them back on. You could just feel someone there with you and it was the feeling of being in a room with someone that is very angry with you, but not saying anything. People said they saw things fly across the room or off desks, and I never saw that, but the lights and the doors were enough. Night shift nurse here. I worked in a rural hospital that was pretty old. The nurse's station faced a long hallway that was known for something. Everyone had witnessed it at one point or another. This thing was like a shadow, but you couldn't see through it, completely solid. It had a habit of limping down the hallway and disappearing, or poking its head out of doorways and staring after people who had just left the room. Day or night, you had this feeling that you were being watched as you walked down that hall. There were other rooms with issues too. The call light would go off without any patients being in that room, patients calling out and asking why there was a man coming into their room, staring at them and then leaving, and the elevator doors would open and close on their own. I worked as an overnight valet at a hotel that was converted from an abandoned late 1800s early 1900s steel factory. To put it mildly, the place was a monument to human suffering. On Sundays, we were usually around 30% capacity, so most of the rooms were completely empty. Most Sundays, I would walk down to the lot around 2 a.m., and various curtains would be open and closed, and when I came back up, several of them would have changed from where they were when I left. I can think of multiple times where we had entire hallways completely empty, but the curtains would still change while I was checking the cars. Guests would regularly complain that the people above them were stomping around, and before we would call the room above them to ask them to quiet down, we would check to make sure it was actually occupied, because there was a 50% chance it wasn't most of the time. We would actually receive less noise complaints on nights where we were at capacity. I helped some guests move to another room after the noise woke them up more than once, and when I went back to grab their last bag, I heard it myself. It sounded like a grown man running. We sent someone to check the room. It was empty. We would also get a lot of calls from guests asking if someone had been into their room to clean, despite the do not disturb sign on the door, because their belongings would have been moved. And, of course, the curtains would have been moved. Our employee room in the basement was the worst. It had motion-sensitive lights that would turn themselves on. 
One night in particular, I was making a cup of coffee to take back upstairs when the lights in the bathroom came on. Then the motion-sensitive sink. Then the motion-sensitive toilet. Then the lights turned back off. Didn't go back downstairs alone for a while. The absolute creepiest part of the hotel was one of the first buildings constructed though. They kept the original wooden floors and they creaked like crazy when you walked on them. I stopped running errands to that building, it wasn't part of my job, but I did it sometimes for the tips, after we received four calls from one of the rooms that was supposed to have been unoccupied. When I went to unplug the phone so we would stop getting what we were writing off as a short in the phone. I couldn't get into the room. The door rejected my card, the manager's card, and the override card. Just as I was getting into the elevator, I heard the electric lock open up. I went back and the card let me in. The phone wasn't even on the hook, and after giving a quick look around, the room was empty. I quit after a few months. Don't regret it. I was babysitting once and her and I were in the living room watching Annie. We were munching on popcorn, enjoying the sleepover, her two older brothers were out for the night. So we head to the kitchen to top up the refreshments, and on passing by a kind of games room, the den. We notice one of her brothers stretched out on the sofa, legs crossed watching a movie. I could see his glasses, socks, full outfit. We called to him many times, nothing. Jokingly threw a soft toy at him and nothing. Both of us went pale and had that tummy drop feeling. He was just a frozen image, no natural breathing movements, just like a projection. We ran into the living room, turned off Annie and got into each of our blankets to sleep. The two brothers returned home hours later and it still freaks me out.